Okay. Hi. Thanks for coming out in this nasty weather. Unfortunately, I was unable to make the pre-meeting because my pre-pre-meeting showed up late. So I've read the book, but some of this is kind of new to me. Um, are there public speakers? No, no, they're not. I'd like approval for the minutes from okay. the last meeting and a second. Okay, good. And the work plan, there are no changes. <coughs> Um, we need a motion to approve the work plan for the coming year. Motion. Feels like we just did this. And a second for the 2010. Okay, so moved. Um, Mike will do his brief overview of what happened in 09, but 09's over, so let's more important give us a brief overview of what's going to happen. Well, I guess we always want to have uh, a historical. We always have somewhat of a historical perspective that makes um, a difference. But anyway, um, um, Patrick, can you turn it on? Okay. Um, just uh, briefly, um, in 2009, we committed over $2.2 billion, awarded 16 major construction contracts, and uh, we have made significant strides uh, in uh, our underground infrastructure uh, on MTACC projects. Uh, just, um, just briefly, uh, you all know that we opened the South Ferry. I'm actually pleased, uh, and I'm pleased also for the designers and the builders, that uh, the South Ferry projects um, uh, garnished about four awards uh, uh, from various uh, magazines. Uh, and, uh, and in fact, there was the Project of the Year Award for the New York Construction Magazine, Best Engineering Design for the New York Construction Magazine, and, and uh, <clears throat> And again, uh, got the Brenda Gill Prize for South Ferry Art Installation. So this was kind of pleasing for everyone involved on in the project. In addition to that, uh, yeah, just before Thanksgiving, we opened the uh, northbound uh, uh, RW station. Um, and uh, we had extensive new infrastructure being built in the last year. And it's side by side. You can see the pictures. Up, oh, where is that? Here we go. This is January 09, the cavern. 34th Street, that's how it looked uh, in effect uh, in December. Uh, next one, Patrick, this is also number seven. This is the under Times Square area. This is January 09, this in December 09. So, so we're really advancing rapidly on this particular project. Um, the, uh, this is the Grand Central Terminal, and we have done extensive work on the, um, what will become the Long Island Railroad Concourse, which is the Medicine Yards. And uh, we reframed a lot of the areas, uh, supported uh, uh, the structures above, and uh, this is really progressing rather well. Uh, if you uh, look to the next one, you're going to see the Long Island Railroad Station Cavern taking shape. Uh, this is uh, now looks uh, similar to um, what we have seen on the um, uh, uh, number seven, although this is going to be much larger. We have uh, many more tunnels there. Uh, the uh, second pile of wall construction was done on 2nd Avenue, uh, and in fact, uh, the launching box, uh, and this is the excavation on the 2nd Avenue, uh, somewhere between 96th Street and 92nd Street, and we're down basically uh, 70 feet below ground, and you would not, not know where, where, or feel that. Um, the concrete slab on the transit center has been completed, and actually uh, uh, about uh, 10 days ago, no, less than 10, a week ago, we have erected the first structural column for the transit center that is about to come. So um, go to the next, uh, Patrick. This is the column, and that was the first column that was erected that will actually support the new transit center. Uh, <clears throat> the look ahead for 2010, uh, we expect to commit over $2 billion again in construction. And, uh, and the, um, 
the Fulton uh, Transit Center, uh, we basically um, uh, will be uh, uh, awarding the Corbin Building. We already received the bid for that. We'll be awarding the finishes for the Day Street. We received the bid for that, both under our budgets, and we expect to award also the Transit Center Building with that. We would be completing all our work for the transit center, all our bids, so now we just, uh, it remains for us to build that and, and complete the construction. Uh, the uh, number seven line, again, uh, we expect to uh, award uh, two major uh, system buildings and the Second Avenue contract will be awarding the 72nd Street that is already on the street, the 63rd Street station, the 86th Street station mining, and the 96th Street Shell and uh, 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 Shell and, and Core, the MEP finishes, and so forth. The East Side Access contract, um, we will be, uh, in effect, awarding a contract that we already received, the Northern Boulevard underpass that was already, we know the, who the, the contractor is, it was negotiated, we just, we have to give them a notice to proceed. And then the GCT concourse and finishes and the construction of 50 seat event plan uh, uh, and uh, will be um, uh, as well awarded. Um, <clears throat> The, uh, in a, on the Fulton Street, and I'm actually going to move forward uh, with the various projects right now, and uh, uh, regarding the Fulton Street Transit, in addition to the foundation work uh, that uh, you just saw, the underpinning of the Corbin building is underway, and anyone that wants to see a, a complex piece of work that is one of them, uh, people are working the old-fashioned way in a very, very constrained space, uh, pick and shovel, uh, everything is being uh, lifted from the ground with, with buckets, and, and in the process we also discover the, uh, a well that is uh, going back to uh, the 1800s that uh, uh, somehow uh, they didn't find any coins. So uh, we are moving along. Um, we have tried to minimize customer impact during construction. As you know, the AC mezzanine is being reconstructed. And, um, and uh, we have built, uh, uh, in effect, uh, temporary stairs and, uh, to allow for the demolition. And actually, most of the demolition of the original maze is, is completed. You can't see it because it's behind barricades, but it's done. A, um, the uh, uh, work on the 4 or 5 station rehab uh, has commenced at the platform uh, and, and at the platform entrances. And... Uh, as I mentioned before, we received bids for the historic rehab of the Corbin building and as well as the uh, Day Street and RW underpasses, and they were below budget, so we are happy with that. So our strategy of splitting the work worked, and we were able to get uh, lots of bids, so that's, that's good. The competition was, was solid. Uh, regarding the number seven line extension, um, both TBMs, in fact, reach the southern end of 34th Street, uh, uh, and actually they are the other end right now, and, and uh, uh, they are digging towards uh, 42nd uh, uh, Street. In fact, one of them has turned the corner and, uh, and has gone under the uh, Lincoln Tunnel, so, um, so that's kind of a um, – we, we, we are very pleased that, that things are moving along. Um, the um, – we are uh, uh, basically looking for ways to keep the original construction time schedule and take advantage of the fact that um, we are about six months ahead of schedule in our um, uh, cavern as well as the uh, TBM. So that's moving well. Um, the Second Avenue subway, um, in effect, uh, we have done about 80 percent of the launch, about 75 percent of the launch box uh, uh, excavated and. Uh, uh, we are placing now already the, the mud slab, and, and we expect to bring in the TBM uh, uh, end of February, beginning of March, sometime in March, and, and uh, start uh, uh, the TBM uh, immediately after. Uh, the um, 72nd Street Station Cavern was advertised in December, and we expect a bid opening scheduled for April. And um, uh, we have forecasted design completion uh, last time for March 2010, for, I'm sorry, February 2010, has moved to March 2010 as a result of some contract mods to provide additional space for signal systems at 86 and 96th Street. We do not expect that to uh, impact the overall project schedule. 
Inside Access, um, uh, we have issued RFP for the installation and uh, main maintenance of escalators and elevators. Uh, this is an innovative procurement strategy to procure long lead elevators uh, and escalators for use by, f uh, by the finishes contractors. So it's an, uh, it's an interface that we have to manage, but that we expect to work well. And uh, uh, the, uh, in effect, uh, the Queens uh, soft ground tunneling work is now underway. Uh, overall, we have, though we did not award the, the Northern Boulevard uh, underpass, these are the, the last, um, uh, we, we have the bid, it was negotiated, and this is the last of the tunneling uh, contracts that uh, we are awarding. Um, so with that, I'm going to conclude. There's nothing uh, more that I can say. And things are moving along, and, and, uh, and a lot of the construction uh, you do not see because it's happening underground. Again, I uh, will extend you an invitation, and we'll have some tours for you at your request uh, to go underground to see it. Michael, Thank you. Quick question on the Fulton Street Transit. Not the light. Yes. Um, the design consultant, you, you have transferred him to the position of the construction manager? No. But we, what we do, the design consultant uh, during construction provides uh, 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 construction support services. That means the last bullet on uh, page 12. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Which one is the last? The question is for the, 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 has been the, well, it's really, it's really construction support services. Uh, they, they stop designing, and then now they're supporting. Um, as you know, since you're a contractor, when you submit your, your right. uh, shop drawings, someone has to review them. That's reviewed by the designer, and they go in. And, and when you have an RFI, that's the designer. The construction manager's role is really to oversee the construction, not do that. So, oh, I understand. Uh, but then, what I think is I think that this is a good thing because you're giving him the project that he designed to manage. Yeah. So he should know no, well, it better than anything. Managing. It's not managing. I'm, no. I'm going to make it a, well, a clear the distinction. It, it, is it's wrong, wrong the way it's shown. Okay. I will say it's wrong. And will you tell we'll us make, we'll, yeah. what's right? I can tell you now and we'll correct it in writing. <laughs> <laughs> what is right is that every time that we have a designer, the designer throughout the life of the contract, after this finished design, continue to do construction support services. That means they are providing design sure. input during construction. There are always changes. The contractor decides to make a change. Now, the construction manager that starts basically uh, early on does only construction management, is not involved with approval of shop drawings, with, with, uh, with design changes and so forth. So, so it is not the, the, properly the, the re identified. The reason why it was identified okay. this way was to explain the change in the EAC for construction management and the numbers above. You had okay. previously approved a modification to um, include this construction phase support services in the PB Bovis contract, and those dollars are now reflected above in the EAC. But we Got can it. reclassify that. Thank you. Tony, in terms of the funding, for the transit center building. Where are we at with that? In pretty good shape. It's 1.4. Um, fully funded, about 200, I believe, 250 is in uh, stimulus funds, too. So it's in good shape. That's a, that's a project in very good shape. And, when do and everything's going really well with it, also. Okay. And when do you think there'll be an actual transit center? Well, we have a, uh, uh, a timetable that says June 2014. 14. Uh, I uh, can assure you that that will be there the, uh, unless something catastrophic happens. Oh, so when we you will say have the project it done. completion date of June 2014, so that building won't be done till the end? I didn't say that. I said the completion date is 2014. It means that 2014 we expect to be totally done. If we are early, we will open it early. But at this uh, point. Why should it take four years? I didn't say four it will take years. four years. I didn't say that. Isn't that a campaign? Four more years? I didn't say that. I'm just saying that, that the, when we first did the, uh, the estimate for completion, it was June 2014. Um, and and um, it would be foolish sometimes to, to, to kind of say to you now that I'm going to be a year early or six months early. We have to get closer to that for me to be able to be in a position to predict the opening day. 
I've done that. I've tried to be early on everything that we've done in that particular case. I mean, because we've paved the way. You don't have to worry about getting rid of anybody there. They've all been thrown out like 20, <laughs> 25 years ago. The longest None. part of this project is actually the AC mezzanine work. That, that's the long pole in that tent of getting that it done, not the years. structure. Uh, they have 40 months uh, to do the job. The AC people. The AC. The, because they have to build. Yeah. Well, you have to remember one thing. The AC mezzanine is being built while we are running the trains. Mm -hmm. So you have to get uh, accommodate the passengers so you don't, do not have the ability to kind of go in full blast and, and do stuff. Yes. You, you want to something, Carl? No, no, I was agreeing. Well, yes. I'm not supposed to I'm agree sorry. with you. We can assume that. <laughs> That's your job to disagree with me. We can assume that you're enough on schedule right now that this potential opening date is, is a real possibility. We're no, no, not. the potential is not a potential. It's actually, I it. believe, is an assured date. Lovely. Uh, the the uh, yes the, the 2014 is an assured date. Uh, earlier than that is something that I will. It's possible, but we are working on it. I cannot right now make any promises to that effect. Mark, I can't believe, okay, I knew you'd have to. <laughs> uh, uh, Michael, you said that the uh, seven-line extension tunnel boring machines had reached 42nd Street and then turned to go under the Lincoln Tunnel. No, Presumably, uh, they no. turned in an easterly direction rather than a westerly direction. Easterly. Yeah, we, we're hoping to go east, yes. It's, uh, it's <laughs> we're to, towards the sunrise, right? Yes, Doreen, I'm sorry. A uh, follow-up follow -up question on this design consultant. If you look at the last reported EAC, it was 110, went down to 102, so that's 8.3 million that I'm assuming got transferred to construction management because that's gone from 102.7 to 113, that's but correct. it's not quite all of it. What's the difference? There's about a $2 million difference. What's that attributable to? Uh, and that, that, that well, we're not going to have to encase it in glass and put flowers in front Absolutely of it. Absolutely not. If okay. you see, there. Uh, Doreen, if you see the spot that this is, uh, it's just, it's incredible because the Corbin building, it ends up in a, the point of a triangle. Uh -huh. And it is a very tight space. And, and we are happy that the people at Shipo looked at it and they said, great, we took a few samples, we, we are fine, keep going. And they, have given us green light to continue the construction. They do have the ability, by the way, because we only uncover about a quarter of it. So if they ever want to do anything, they would have to go onto the other side, that means onto the street. I don't think that's going to happen. This well was actually filled with concrete way back when the building was built. What's amazing about uh, what we're doing right now, we're underpinning the building. And just to so understand what it means for whoever is not in construction, underpinning is that we went under the foundation and we're, we're building a new foundation to support the building. So it's in a very tight spot, and, and actually we have some pictures, but I didn't want to bore you with that. But I that's have just really one other question yes. on, the seven, on the seven line. It, in order to develop the design completion schedule, requires the city's agreement on a basis of design and easement. When is that going to be forthcoming? Uh, are you talking about the various uh, sites that uh, are we talking the about? The various cloud developer sites, yeah. Uh, I think that, uh, and I'm going to let uh, 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 Ronnie speak because she is the one that nego she's part of the negotiation team with the city. I believe that some of that have been done, and we have the, the basis for design are in place at this point. How the buildings will look like next to us, we don't know, but we do have our footprint, and we know what our buildings will look like. If there is anything, right? So we are we are proceeding to with a final design on that right now. Yes. Ah, I'm very sorry. Um, this book uh, has four projects in it and doesn't have the fifth, the South uh, Ferry Station. Done. Have you, because you only have four rather than five ongoing projects, reduced your staff by twenty percent? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, in fact, it did not. Uh, but, it did not but it did not increase our staff. But uh, 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 let me put it this way. Um, wait, 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 wait. Because we have to, we have to be cognizant of how things are happening. Uh, we moved from the uh, South Ferry construction into full blast for Fulton Transit. That is a larger project, double the size. And that's really the people that were working on South Ferry have moved to 
to uh, the uh, Fulton Transit. So, and and you, as you know, some of the the way we, we normally the cost for managing a construction is a percentage of cost, and and we are staying well below that. So so we are. We are efficient in doing that. In fact, we did not, although we're doing more construction now than ever, remember at the very beginning, whatever we did was design. So, so now we, are, we moved into construction, and we need many more people actually out to manage construction, so we make sure that the job is done within the specs and the quality that is appropriate, as well as the safety that is required. And also so it's going to be here in 2014, because they'll be kicking me off by that. No, none of us to make sure this gets done. Right. <laughs> With some incarnation there. Yes. Has, has, that, has that been, was that a plan? When this one was done, I was going to go into and I actually think we did talk about it. Also, that. South Ferry was a good portion, almost at one time, like 50% of our work at the very beginning. So South Ferry was big. And then the other ones started coming in. As Michael said, a lot of it was in design. A lot of, a lot of original work was in design. But if you remember uh, last month I, or two months ago, I actually put in the actual workload and the amount of construction work and how that goes up. So. Okay, I also would like to mention one thing that I have not mentioned. Um, we were into a, a search and, and, uh, for a new uh, project exec for the East Side Access. And uh, this week uh, I have appointed uh, Alan Paskov. Uh, he's in the back of the room. You can stand up, Alan. Uh, and Alan actually was the deputy for, uh, for the project, and he carried the ball since July when uh, the former uh, Bill Stead, the, the project exec, left, and he has done a superb job, and uh, he won uh, the, uh, the contest of uh, being the next project exec. So. Congratulations. Anyway. Okay, let's um, move on unless anyone has any other questions. About 09 or what's to maybe happen in 010? 010. 010. Okay, so now we have a few procurements. Mm -hmm. We have five procurement items this month. One of them um, relates to a modification to the East Side Access Queens Board Tunnel Contract. Thank you. Um, that's a change order that relates to additional slurry wall work in the Queens open cut excavation. And then there are four ratification items. Three of the ratification items um, relate to the completion of the security um, project in the amount, the total is $4.8 million. And there is a, a last ratification that relates to the Second Avenue subway tunneling contract with S3 tunnel constructors for um, some building stabilization work in the amount of $785,000. That's, that's the end, so you could take them as a group. In the Queens Tunnel, what contractor was defaulted? The original Pile Foundation contract, who was doing the original part of that open-cut excavation. And who was that, do you remember? Pile Foundation oh, right, was the name of the company. Okay, right. Right. Nobody seems to guess the slurry wall cost uh, very well, do they? I, I will defer to technical people, but my understanding is that the slurry wall was done by pile. There were problems that were recognized immediately with the slurry wall, and the, as they did additional geotechnical excava uh, investigation to decide just what the necessary repairs were, that's what this reflects, this additional work. But I agree. Project, since I've been here, well, with, with uh, slurry walls, me, um, do we talk to the Port Authority? I mean, they are the yeah, sine qua non and slur uh, slurry well, walls. Look, we, we have done slurry walls, and, and, and probably Pyle has done slurry walls for, for the port and so forth. In, in this particular case, um, the, the slurry wall was supposed to, in effect, create a tub that, is, uh, that, would, that would not allow water to seep in, at least not in the quantities that it happened. So uh, as they were defaulted, the question then became, which part of the wall were leaking. And, and while some we knew, you had to really look to see on all of them because if you plug some of it and the water continues to come in, you've not done the job. So uh, it was uh, uh, obviously not a good job, and we got, uh, but we got the money. So it's not that they, they got away with it. Uh, we received, in fact, the value of uh, all their work. So.
Okay. Um, are they now on a – are we putting them on a do not work with this vendor list or something? I think they're out of business, if I'm oh, right. Are they, they went business? bankrupt. So I don't think – It would be is. impossible for them to get another contract with us. God bless them. Did okay. they call a bond? I'm sorry. Well, we called a bond in. Yes, yes we did. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> Some, sometimes people need to be careful in what they bid, and, and, and uh, you can't, you know, this was a very complicated project. So, what can I say? Yeah, but we are good people to do business with. Yes, we really are. Um, I'd like a motion. Motion made. That they're all important, but are there any that are just well, I, I so would interesting? <clears throat> we I would describe the uh, the railroad and, and transit items as uh, odds and ends. The we have two leases for your approval this month. One is simply an extension of a lease for about sixty thousand feet uh, that is used for the East Side Access Project, the capital construction people and consultants, and. The other is uh, new interim lease space for the business service center that the board approved in, I believe it was 2007. Uh, so this is an implementation of the business service center concept, and although I appreciate that it may be counterintuitive that we enter into a new lease in order to save money, the, we, you know, we believe we'll be saving a good deal of money over time as uh, the business service center goes into effect and we're able to centralize uh, functions that are now being handled on a decentralized basis in the agencies. There's a fairly detailed write-up in here of the proposed terms for the BSC lease. I, I just want to commend uh, Andrew Greenberg of Real Estate. This is, a, I think, a spectacular result. We're looking at, at initial leases uh, in the $26 per square foot range, which even in this environment is quite something. Uh, the space is on 34th Street in a, you know, kind of medium building. We'll be one of two tenants in the building. Just a quick question on that. I don't, the, the amount is spectacular. The per square foot cost is spectacular. But to house 450 people, we need somewhere between 80,000 square feet. Am I reading that right? To 130,000 square feet for 450 people? Do I have the, is, is that, are That's, those the right numbers in? Exactly, for 450 people, that seems palatial. I mean, I want people, just every person in a cubicle, just like I sit in. <laughs> Maybe we could take a tour at some point. But do you still want to approve this? This is even better than the. Yeah. This is largely open, pre-built space, and that's the advantage of it. We'd be doing very little, uh, relatively very little work. In do we have to rent to the it. full amount of square feet? I mean, we can't take some of it. Is no, it? no, that's been our assessment that this is the amount of space that's required, and we, you know, we did a, we did a detailed. And program. how many year lease is it? It's it's a fundamentally. It's a four-year commitment. Well, I can just look. And it's a, it. It, we have we have uh, an initial term of ten years with a, an a with an ability to terminate after four, and extension options that would take us through twenty. Mm -hmm. So it gives us a lot of flexibility as we evaluate other possibilities down the road. And the MTA doesn't have any office space that could do this combined. That's, that, that's correct. I mean, the, the 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 functions that will be consolidated here are spread out among various. Uh, owned and leased facilities uh, that that are controlled currently by the MTA, obviously. So we do anticipate that over time, as these functions are moved, we will have some churn and then some ability to consolidate further in those existing spaces and and hopefully to realize some economies or to just offload some of that space. But in the in the near term, in order to put this uh, this production in, into place, 
we do not have any space that would be suitable for this consolidation. Will anybody end up with big fancy offices in this thing? No. Because if there is a big office, then we'll put four people in it. I'm dead serious. No. Nobody in my own personal business has a big office anymore. The value of the space will be built up as we need and what are they going to be the expenses to get everybody in there? Are you going to have to buy furniture? Are you going to have to buy? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, on the issue of a non-agenda item, just out of oh, curiosity. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can we just move these and then you're... Oh, is certainly. That, and then we'll go anywhere you want to go. Ooh. Okay. Barbados. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Cozumel. <laughs> my house, yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now on a non-agenda item. How did you resolve, if at all, the Yankee Stadium issue? Uh, we've still we've been had pulled. extensive discussions on this subject. Oh, Thank you're you. still under uh, discussion. We are. Uh, well, we had we had some discussion with Jeff Kay, and the way we left it was that uh, that we are in discussions with related, which in connection with the uh, shopping center there has an adjacent parking facility. This is the this is the parking facility you may recall that we were using under the temporary construction easement, and we are. We're uh, evaluating whether there is any opportunity to do better on our on our uh, our price there because they are not subject to the bond covenants that, ironically, standard is subject to. Okay. Well, the the, the fundamentally, Mark, we have not brought it to you this month, and we are, we're, we're we're keeping our powder our powder is bone dry on this. It's his waking thought. <laughs> Um, any other questions on or off the agenda? Okay. I need to close the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.